So hi guys, welcome to the course on Python cybersecurity. Um, I'm Hanin, and with me is Boyan, and we are from um, Daman High School. Yes. So, yeah. So um, moving on to the next slide. Yeah. So this will be the link that you guys can use to have access to all our codes that we'll be using in the course. So uh, what are the possible cyber attacks, right? So one of which will be malware. And then malware uh, is a shorthand for malicious uh, software, which typically consists of code developed by cyber attackers designed to cause extensive damage to data and systems to gain unauthorized access to a network. Yeah, so um, there are actually various cyber attacks possible, and this was only one of them. Um, the others would be uh, SQL injection and Hmm. Uh, phishing, yes. So, so which which leads us to the main topic of cybersecurity. Uh, why is cybersecurity? In, in, why is cybersecurity? So, cybersecurity is the protection of networks, devices, and data from unauthorized access or criminal use, and the practice of ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. So, why must we protect ourselves from cybersecurity? Uh, all our data currently are stored online because of the prevalent users of the internet. And then we store basically everything online because of convenience, right? So uh, that's why it's important to ensure that we are safe on the cyberspace. So how do we protect ourselves from uh, cyber attacks then? So ethical hacking is one of the ways where we can protect ourselves. Uh, basically, it's hacking performed by company or individuals to, get, to help identify potential threats on a computer or network. Yeah. So uh, to move on, moving on to the main gist of our course today, we'll te be teaching you guys four different methods of how we can protect ourselves on cyber, yeah, how we can protect ourselves on the web. So namely, there are port scanner, encryption, input data validation, and key logger. So now uh, we'll pass the time on to Boyan to explain more. So we'll be starting off with port scanners. So port scanning in Python is essentially just sending client requests to like each different port of a specified IP address to check if that port is open. So it's just like how a burglar, before going to like burglar a house, he will actually go to the house and like check if the door or the windows were open so that he can like get in more easily. So in this case in Python, we'll be using sockets to send the client request to each of the port in the IP address. So we'll start with a demonstration. Okay, so I will use idle for this. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so first, yeah, we will from we will import everything from socket module. So first we'll import everything from the socket module. 
Then next, we'll import time so that we can know how long our program can run. So we will start first with defining a start time, which is the current time of which when the time the program starts. Then we'll start with a run condition of the normal if name is equals to main. Yes. So first we'll ask the user for a target input IP address. Yeah. Then next, we will be config. We will be changing the target given by the host to an IPv4 address through the get host by name function. Yeah. And then next, we'll be just printing a line to tell the user that the scan is starting. Okay, so next we'll be starting a for loop of 50 to 60. Uh, the slides show 50 to 500, but because in this case we have a limited time and 50 to 500 will be too long, we'll just do 50 to 60. So first we'll initialize a socket with AFINet and SockStream. Yeah, then we'll use the socket to connect to the IP address and the current port which is specified in the for loop. Yeah, then next we'll check if the connection is, if it's equal to zero, that means the connection has went through and thus the port is actually open. So we can print that the port number, this port is open. Yeah, then else that means the port is not open because we have gotten a message, so we can tell the user that this port is closed. Uh, so next, we'll close the socket so that in the next for loop, we can connect to the same IP address but in another port. Then lastly, we will print out the time taken for this whole program to run, which is essentially the time at the end of the program minus of the start time. Okay, then we will run this program. Yeah, and then the host to be scanned is... Yeah, so we will be scanning a test server by nmap, which is the scanme.nmap.org with the IP address of 
post without the dot. Get, get, get without the dot. Yeah, so it's starting the scan on the host. This can take a while as sockets are very, very slow. Yeah, so currently, as you can see, it's been a quite a while, and it, only, it has only like sense that two ports are closed. Okay. So we'll let it run in the background and then we will move to the next part, which would be encryption in Python. So encryption in Python, for encryption in Python, we'll be using the Hashlib module and we'll be teaching you how to encrypt your text string with a very widely used algorithm called SHA-256. So we'll start with a demonstration. So first, we'll create a new file on the idle. So first, we'll import hashlib. Then next, we'll ask the user for an input. Then we'll be defining result as the encryption of the SHA-256 in the Hashlib module. So we'll initialize it with a text dot encode, which encodes the string, which is text. And then we'll print out the result dot hex digest, which is the encrypted string with the SHA-256, because printing result will only return a SHA-256 object. Yes, so we will save it and run it. So we can try hello world. Yes, you can see this is like the encrypted string through the SHA-256 algorithm. And you can see the previous program. So the program stopped prematurely because we started running the encryption. But it has scanned that from port 50 to port 58 of the test server for NMAT, um, all these eight ports are closed. Yeah, so now we, that we are done with port scanning and encryption, we will be moving on to the next part, which would be our input data validation. So I'm sure all of you like, have written programs before and that you have been asking users for their input. And sometimes users may decide to input data that is not what you want. And this may cause, the, may cause errors in your program and 
result in your program stopping. So in this case, we'll be using the try and accept in Python, where the try block lets us test a block of code for errors, and the accept block lets us handle the error. So we'll be demonstrating how to use it. Over a new file. I know. So, first we'll start with a while true so that we can continuously ask, for the, ask the user for input if it does not accept it. And then we'll start with a try and we will attempt to make the input of the user of their age into an integer. Next, we would do an accept value error because that is the error that occurs when something that is not a number is put into int. Then we'll print an error message. Then after that, we will tell the program to continue running after there is a value error. So for the next condition, we'll be using an if else to check if the age is a negative number. So if age is less or equals to zero, we would also print out an error message. Then after this, we'll continue. We will tell the program to continue. Then else, this means that it has passed both conditions and we, would, we are ready to exit the loop and put in a break. So now that we have exited the while loop, we will do our last check condition. So if h is more or equals to 21, we can, then we can tell the user that they are eligible to vote in Singapore. And else, we would tell the user that they are not. Okay, we will tr attempt to run this. So first, we will try to input with a character A. So as you can see, it says that, sorry, I didn't understand that, which means that it's the first condition, the try and accept condition, that it did not fulfill and outputted the error message. We could also try with a colon. You output the same thing as the program is unable to make this string into an integer. So we can try now with a negative number of negative one. So this, hits the sec this does not fulfill the second condition in the if else, thus it would still return another uh, the second error message. So now we can try 10 years old, which means that this would not fulfill the last error message. Now we will run the program again to... We will run the program again to... with trying age 21 to show that they are eligible to vote with this input. Okay, so we will be, we are done with this part <laughs> and we will be moving on to the last part of our workshop, which is the keylogger. So first we'll need all of you who are going to attempt this to pip install pyput. Yes, pip install pi input, yes. So has everyone succeeded in pip installing? Okay, sure. Okay. 
Okay, we shall walk around and see if anyone needs help. Does anyone need help? Oh no, it's spelled wrongly. It's pi n p u t. Input, but without the I, you see. Uh, so input. Okay. Okay. So, Amber, are you fine? Yeah, you know what? Just, just proceed. <laughs> okay. We shall now proceed on. So, keyloggers can be used to allow, you can use it to run it in the background and see if anyone decides to use your laptop or devices without you knowing and you'll also be able to see what they have been attempting to look for on your devices without you knowing. So now we'll open a new file and start. So firstly, we will from pi, pi input, uh, dot keyboard import the key and listener. Next, we'll import the logging so that we can actually write to a file. Then we'll set the log directory. So in this case, the log directory would be the directory that this file is currently in. So we'll be using the directory desk that our Python file currently is in. As you can see, it's on the top of the save file. So you all should not be copying ours. You all should be saving it where you want to save it. Please key in the correct directory in a place where you can actually find the final output file. Yes, so for now, this is our directory. Is everyone done with keying in your own directories? Okay, then we'll move on with setting the configurations for our logging. So first, we'll be logging.basicconfig. We'll be setting the file name to be equals to our log directory. And then we will name our output text file to be keylog.txt. So the log directory will be where this text file will be saved in. Then next, we'll be setting the logging level, the level to be uh, to logging debug so that we can actually read. Then lastly, the format would be of S time and message. If any of you cannot follow us, you all can go online to the Google Drive and you all can refer to the code there. So next, we'll be defining a function called onPress with the import of key, which would, be, which would be detected when you press on the key on your keyboard. So we'll do a logging.info shrink key, which would actually let logging record the stroke of your key. Then lastly, we'll do the run. We'll make it run through with listener and set the condition of the function being true to itself. On press equals to on press. And name this as listener. And then we'll make it join all the output from the keyboard together to write to the text file. Okay, we shall run this now. So it's currently running. Then we shall just open up a notepad file. And then we shall just type random characters in there, like hello world. OK, so now that we have this, then we shall go into the file. 
then we shall go into the file directory where our program is stored here. As you all can see, there's a keylog.txt inside there. Then when we open it, we can see that here, this is what we have typed after the program has started running. So as you can see, we have searched for notepad. We have typed in the hello world. So this can continue to run in the background and record all keystrokes that you have typed. So, yeah. So does anyone need help? Okay, sure. Uh, you all can refer to the drive, but we can always... It's in these slides. Oh, yeah. So we shall show you the slides. The slides is at this link. Yes. Yes, so this is where the slides is at. You all can access this drive to access our workshop video, our slides, and all the program code. Sure. Do you all need any assistance? The O is the big one, and zero is a small one. <laughs> you closed it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Do you all need any assistance <laughs> in typing in the link? <laughs> copy, copy, yeah, just go tiny. Okay, so for the benefit, we shall copy it and go to tiny URL and make your lives much easier. Okay, so the tiny URL is tinyurl.com slash qp44s34. So has everyone managed to assess the slides? Okay, so do you all still need the code for the keylogger or are you all able to view it for yourselves? Okay, go to the code. No, just go to the code. Yeah, so this is the code for the keylogger. So since this is the last part of our workshop, you all can actually try out different ideas in and different ideas and also the different parts of our workshop in different contexts, like maybe the input data validation, not in the age context, but maybe in some other context, like asking them to input their email. Yeah. So does anyone need help in doing this? We shall come and help your Actually, I kind of have a question. Is there any way that y'all can trigger an event to happen if, let's say, someone press the A key or something, just by using the right key? Like, 
I think then if you are going to want that to trigger, then I think when you read in the key at like, I don't know, I think it's at the string key there, I think like you can compare like, because let's go to the key lock there. So as you can see, each. <laughs> okay, so as you, as you can see like, in here, each, each has like a similar format. So if you are able to compare this last string here to, let's say, equals, equals A, then you should be able to add in a specific event that occurs. Okay. Yeah. What event can you add? Depends on what you want to do. Can you make your entire screen black or like flash black? That, 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 that's if you find how to do it. I'm sure you can do it in Python. You can do everything in Python. So, does anyone have any more questions? If not, that's all we have. Yes, thank you.